Hello, Desert Bearhawk fans. We're back in the shop with the second installment or the second video on how I make a nose rib and the tools that I use. It's, right now, the most important tool in the shop is this bottle of ice cold water because it's about 130 degrees in here while I'm doing this, but I can't have any fans or anything running because it screws up the audio. So I'm taking a I'm taking the heat for you guys. So um, what I'm going to show you in this video or in this series of videos is how I make a nose rib. A nose rib. That's this. This is a completed nose rib. This well, this is 99% done. When it's actually completed, completed, there'll be a vertical stiffener riveted in here and a vertical 90 degree attach point so I can attach this to the spar. And uh, you'll notice that there's a bit of a bow in it and when those 90s get riveted in, the bows come out. So the whole gist of the project here is to manufacture 44 identical ribs just like this one. So the way we do that is, and, and, the, and, and the way this starts off is it starts off kind of like that. This is even a few tooling steps down the road, but we're going to basically turn this into this. And I'm going to show you the tooling that we use to do that and explain how I made it and what it's for. So let's, let's do that now. <clears throat> the very first thing you need to do is you need to have a pattern to cut the aluminum to. So when I made this part, imagine this being just a sheet of aluminum, say 18 inches by 12 inches square or 24 inches by 12 inches square, whatever it works out to be. It's just a blank piece of aluminum and I have to get this shape out of this aluminum. So the first thing I did is I cut me a, I cut me a blank piece of aluminum, roughly you know, an inch or so outside the dimensions of this piece here. And I did that with, with these guys, these sheet metal shears that were my grandfather's, um, as he is a sheet metal man all the way back to the 40s. And then my, they were given to my dad, or my dad acquired them when my grandfather passed. And now I have taken them from my dad, and I have them to use in my shop. So, and these, uh, these snips cut the 25 thousandths sheet metal, the aluminum sheet metal that we're using, they cut them pretty, pretty easily. No problem cutting right through this stuff. Um, I probably have a little bit of a kung fu grip now because I cut out, you know, uh, 48 of these aluminum blanks, but regardless, this is what I used to do the initial cut was these shears. And basically I cut the piece of aluminum big enough to allow me to get this shape out of the blank that I cut. So, that's the first step as far as the aluminum goes. But prior to even doing that, you got to have some forms and some patterns. So, I had to make the full size form block. And the way that you do that is, is that you take, um, you take information or you use the, the full size rib that goes from the leading edge to the trailing edge and I have one of those it's too big to put on camera but it's the full size rib and it has tooling holes all along it and you just choose the section you want to work with and you make your tool off that tool and I did it with a router table so basically what I did the first step is is I take a piece of wood a piece of MDF one inch MDF and I cut it slightly larger so I cut a you know, a 20, 20 or 22 inch by, you know, 11 and a half or 12 inch piece rectangle of this MDF material. And then what I do now, imagine, I'm going to, you have to imagine a little with me, but imagine that this is the full size, the full size rib with its tooling holes. So what I'll do is I will take my aluminum blank or excuse me my MDF blank and I will so imagine this being the MDF blank and I will put the full size rib over the top of it and I will line up this edge with lines that are drawn on it this indicates the face of the spar and I'll line everything up get it all lined up and make sure that that my material here exceeds the margins of the rib all the way around and I will, once I've got that, I will very carefully 
to the master rib, I will drill down through these two holes right here, and now I will have this part will be indexed to this master rib. These tooling holes will hold it in position, so every rib that comes off of there will be identical to every other rib that comes off of there. Then, I will take that whole contraption, still pin together, the master rib on top with its proper shape and the piece and the part that I'm making, the rib form I'm making on the bottom without its contours cut yet. And I will take a pen and I will just draw on here and make a, make a line. Now I can remove this. Oh, and I pin it with these pins. These are like quarter inch steel dowel pins. They just go right down through there and they pin these blocks together. So they cannot move. They're now locked together. So once I've drawn a, a rough outline on my blank board, I take that over to my bandsaw and I trim it down to about a quarter inch all the way around. Let's get that material out of there. So now I've got basically a rough shape of the form block. Then I put the master rib back on top. I take my pins and I repin it. Right there and there. And then I take the whole thing over to my router table. And we'll show you some we'll show you the video of that router table another time. But basically the router table has in a laminate trimmer bit. Now this is this is the chuck and everything off my router, because right now I've got a quarter inch bit in there, but this is a half inch bit, and you'll notice there's a bearing right here. And this cutter tooth or this cutter knife sits perfectly parallel and at the same height or width as this bearing. So when, the, when you're cutting in the material as the bearing hits it can't go any deeper than that. So it'll cut it off flush. And then what I do is I take now imagine this being a table right here. We're looking at it from the side. I take my master, I take my blank, and I run this router bit up until this bearing hits the master and then I just follow it all the way around like so, and it makes an exact copy of the master rib. It's kind of a pain in the neck because the master rib's super long. But once I've got that exact copy, I don't need that master rib anymore, so I can take that thing and put it back in its little holding spot and we're done. So now I've got this full size form block. So now it's time to start making some tools. So the first thing I want to do is I want to copy this. So I make a second one of these, basically the same way as I did the first, so now I've got two exact copies. Then I take that second one and I reduce the edge by one eighth. And you'll see in a, in a bit why I do that, but briefly it's so I can get my hammer in here and set the edge of my rib. And the way that I do that is I use my same router bit, but I go with a smaller bearing. So now the blade, the cutting surface of the, of the laminate trimmer bit it's going to sit about a sixteenth of an inch proud of this bearing. So when this bearing is following the master form, it'll actually cut the identical shape into the part you're cutting less one sixteenth of an inch. So I make a couple passes with it and now I'm reduced by an eighth but I have a perfect one eighth relief all the way around. So that's my backer. So the first two forms I made. Once those were made, then I put my backer away and I had to make my cutting form to cut the blanks. Now, you'll notice on the blank I've got this doesn't look really like a ribbit in this, you know, this one looks nice and airfoil shaped. This one isn't because I had to mill in or excuse me, I had to allow for this flange. This is a 9 16 of an inch flange. So, in order to do that, I used a method called the magic washer. And the magic washer method is kind of cool. Let's see if I can demonstrate it to you where it makes any sense. Um, I'll try it on this piece of paper here. Hopefully you can see it. Um, I should probably use my black sharpie, but whatever. So just imagine that this is a piece, this white paper is a piece of MDF that I'm going to cut this form block out of. So 
I'm just I'm putting this line here so it gives you some context as to what I'm about to do. This is the magic washer and what makes it magic is is that the distance between the inside edge and the outside edge is 9 16 I want to make a 9 16 flange all the way around so instead of futzing around with calculations and this or that, all I do is slide this magic washer up against it, up against the part you want to duplicate, put your pencil on the inside edge and just roll it. Just like that. All the way around. And that will give you a 9 16 edge onto your master pattern. So that's what I did. On my blank I used the magic, the magic uh, washer and I made a pattern all the way around. So now, if I pin these two together, and I won't because it's kind of a pain to get them in and out, you can see that I have the master rib and I've got a, six, a 9 16 edge here and here. Now we don't take this flange all the way around the nose because of the arc of this rib would cause some pretty significant problems when you try to bend this over, but we'll discuss those later. But The plans call for it to come right to here, so that's where they go. So. What I do is, is I have to, this is where it gets a little dicey because I don't have a master pattern to route from. So what I did is I drew on my magic rib, or my magic washer, I drew my line onto my magic rib no less. And uh, once I had a line, then I very carefully bandsawed it toward, almost to the line and I took it to a sanding table and I just sanded right up to the edge of that on a belt sander. And it's not mission critical that this be an exactly perfect line because this flange is going to get bent over. This is the line that's critical because this is the one that forms the airfoil. So once I've got this part, I can easily duplicate it again because I just set this one onto a blank board, drill my pinholes, pin the boards together, and now I've got two of them. And I did this process I did it, this one's a quarter inch short, but I actually made a full size one of these. And then I reduced the edge by either a quarter or an eighth, depending on which set of forms I want. So I've got three sets of these blocks. One's a full size, one's an eighth short, and one's a quarter short. But they're all identical. All right, make sense so far? Okay, good. Now I have these holes in here, and those holes were picked off the master form, the full size rib, it's got all the holes, tooling holes in it marked for all the lightning holes. So I just took this over, took these over to my master form, put the master form on top, pinned it, drilled my tooling hole center and my tooling hole center. So now I know where my tooling holes go. I'm sure that makes sense. Okay, once I have those tooling hole centers, I used a tool called a fly cutter. If you've never used one of these fly cutters, and I apologize for keep stepping off camera, but I gotta wipe, I gotta wipe the sweat off my forehead because it's really hot out here. Anyways, if you've never used one of these, uh, I would offer you a word of caution. They will rip your fingers off and throw them across the room. So just be careful if you ever use a fly cutter. But basically, how this fly cutter works is it sits. You, you know, the center pin here is where your drill press is turning it and it bores a hole and as it bores a hole it's spinning around and then this cutter arm right here cuts the circle that you're trying to cut. So I took a fly cutter, milled a circle, milled a circle. Did it on one board. Did it on the master, not the quarter short, but the master. Because everything's made off the master. I just happened to pick up the quarter short one for this video. And once I've got the two holes milled in here, then everything gets pinned to it, back to the router table, use the router bit, the router bit follows this hole and mills the hole in the second piece and subsequent pieces perfectly. So that's how I get to this point with this master pattern. And this master pattern is used to cut out the aluminum blank. So we will discuss that in the next video.